as a spiritual director and learning how she valued spiritual direction. And that's another thing. No spiritual director, in my book, has the right to be a spiritual director if they don't have a spiritual director. Because we're all on the journey, and none of us have ever arrived. It was I don't get into the flagellation and the beating of the body. I, because to me, and I think to Hildegard, from what we know about her and how she adorned her sisters, the body was the temple of the divine. And you don't beat that up. Because for me, to live in the cloister meant that I was truly the bride of Christ. And I would never leave there. And I could be in communion through meditation and prayer and deeply intimate with the Christ energy to compose 77 songs, to produce the first morality play, to write nine books, to found two monasteries, to, to have a healing ministry, to write books on herbs and stones, and to heal people with the right foods and understand the mysteries of the animal, the animal kingdom. It just blows your mind. And so yes, she was the saint of creativity for sure. To be a superstar in the Middle Ages meant I and I believe her. So she went off to preach in public, not just to priests and, and uh, monks, nuns, but she, she spoke in public, in, in cathedrals and public squares. And at the same time, she showed tremendous uh, courage for somebody who was that sick to go out to face uh, a whole armies of people, because as you know, she preached to armies, not only to lay people, wherever she was, and she made them come to their senses and come to a higher dimension in life. I think that was what she was very, very good at. And of course, we all know there's no turning back. And once the opening begins, um, it just continues to unfold. And so how can you uh, make research on people with 2,000 drugs. So it was inspired. She, for example, she took the stone in her hand and says, what's with the calcedony? What kind of healing forces are in there? And she got that idea inspired or envisioned and dictated that to a monk because she was not able to write herself. I believe that Hildegard was not just a personal one-on-one -on -one healer, but she was a societal healer. And I believe that she actually looked at some of the structures of our society and tried to bring about change. And she had many, um, many men at that time very much respected her because she spoke from and she wrote from such a place of inner authority that came from her mystical relationship with creation. In any respects. She felt a connection to stones and knew that stones have a healing power too. So it's all these things in creation that by opening ourselves up to them in, um, in a mystical way, we can um, become healers of ourselves. So, so she, went, she didn't actually heal people. She opened up a space in their spirit where they could heal themselves through a relationship with the, the, the plant world and with stones. So we have nowadays. I think she opened up people's hearts, not their minds, but their hearts, to um, having this relationship with, with Jesus, with creation, um, through prayer. That God wants um, 